Okay, hello everybody, let's start. Uh, uh, people are still gathering here, sorry for a delay because it's a hot summer in Belgium and our second day of the uh, People are still here taking our uh, place and uh, I want to apologize to all the people who are waiting on the Zoom already for uh, like uh, minutes. Let's say it's not a big delay. Uh, so uh, today, yesterday we started with a working session which was more uh, focused on a regional topic uh, with organizations from uh, former Yugoslavia as there was a, like as we share some common history and we have a clear status of the artists. And uh, uh, the whole discussion was in um, our languages that we share. So today, session is in English because we are uh, treating a, a much broader uh, topic. Uh, it's the, maybe the hottest and hardest topic that we have in our struggles for better conditions in art that it relates to um, economic uh, issues. Uh, payment and the remuneration of uh, artists and uh, like uh, different ways of how also maybe during the pandemic uh, different organizations like uh, try to counter these uh, problems and uh, longer term uh, strategies. Look, so uh, here uh, I will just briefly present all the organizations and people who are still not all uh, present, so maybe yes. Uh, we have uh, here Vasilena Bartuska from Ige Kultur from uh, Austria. Um, in the last moment, and I'm really thankful for this, uh, I will see a, um, sorry, Carla Bro. Okay, uh, Lucia Carla Bro is from. Avi from Italia that joined us, although we, it was a, on a short, very short notice. Uh, also, here is uh, Ivan Mikkel, who will uh, uh, present us uh, his experience from the Slovenian Association of Artists. Jordan, the surname? Okay, uh, from the uh, State of the Art from Brussels. Uh, also, our host organization, Association of Artists of uh, Serbia, Anna Kutlesha from Zakruh, uh, uh, from Zagreb, Croatia, uh, our friends uh, and uh, yeah. Dejan from uh, Association of, of, Association of Artists of Kujice, Sanel and Hanovic from Austrian Association of Artists and our colleagues from uh, uh, working group from uh, Ulus, um, Katia Praznik, uh, who wrote um, lots of things, like uh, important texts about uh, our payment uh, for art artist wages, and she will present uh, experience from uh, Beige Collective a little bit. Uh, that's, that is uh, more or less uh, all. Uh, and today we join us all Juliana Rako. She is just having, she just arrived on the airport and she'll be here directly. Uh, she'll come here directly uh, because from uh, the uh, Assemblaria de Artista de Catalonia. And also, um, we have here um, Goran Rukic, uh, who we already yesterday started, as he is uh, very much involved in a, a syndical organization, unions in Slovenia. He uh, was uh, taking part in, a, uh, in Belgrade, uh, in Serbia, like our considering this possibility to organize uh, workers, I mean, um, art workers, visual art workers union in, uh, <clears throat> in order to uh, better negotiate our demands and so on. 
So I will not uh, go very uh, too much in uh, like it is everybody, like I think from, uh, the organizations are very much concerned about the uh, problems related to payment of uh, uh, artists and especially visual artists. Who, the main problem <laughs> is that uh, artwork is uh, not uh, considered as a work often by artists themselves and also by the system of art or like the um, law as well as the uh, artists are not recognized as workers by the labor law. At least uh, in Serbia is like this, that they are uh, work is regulated by the uh, law of the culture. Okay. Um... So I would propose for the beginning to, uh, if we make a first round so that uh, we uh, present a little bit because also our organizations are of very different uh, kind. There is uh, like a professional associations of artists as ours, for example, who is, that is very old as it has hundred years yes. of existence but in another way it's very new as uh, this struggle we are doing uh, is initiated uh, just a year and a half ago uh, with uh, um, with uh, our like uh, with uh, this uh, a moment where uh, artists like uh, our like some part of the artists organized to take, uh, I don't know, like these are uh, responsibilities and positions where, from where we could uh, um, in, initiate, organize uh, in working groups and uh, work on different uh, demands concerning the position of um, artists in society, let's say, and the uh, position of uh, art and start to uh, like, just build our positions to negotiate with the government. Uh, but also here, there, there is a other kind of uh, initiatives, uh, like for example, uh, the Kruh from Zagreb, or I don't know, like a uh, wage is also different kind of uh, organization, I guess also AWI uh, of the artists who like organize just in order to uh, struggle for, for these um, better conditions of work uh, in art. And uh, so I would like maybe to start with uh, Vasilena from uh, uh, IGEP. Maybe I made an error before, but IGEP building the Kunst because I'm uh, confusing uh, sometimes uh, in Austria. So she can explain us um, also how the organization is uh, functions and what are the like uh, main um, uh, principles guidelines or like in uh, uh, in which um, uh, IG uh, building the kunst is posing these uh, demands and uh, maybe uh, focus a little bit more on the economic issues because we also know that there is a, a like a price list and so and i just would like to say that okay, of course, like we have to take in mind that our um, economic political uh, contexts where our organizations are coming from are very different. So what uh, uh, would be the purpose a little bit of this uh, working session is also to try to uh, bring all the, to discuss all the criteria that should take uh, be, uh, took in consideration when we are talking about making the this uh, price list propositions for price list uh, for artists and so on and also like to uh, discuss uh, what are the strategies how to um, how to make them uh, applicable how to um, yeah a little bit, bit like this <clears throat> So Vasilena, please, can you? Yes, thanks a lot. Uh, I would like to show uh, next to uh, 
Well, I'm, I made a kind of, a, let's say, maybe a big detailed uh, presentation about the exhibition fees and the way we, all the way we went to the point we are now. But uh, I will start at the beginning with uh, what the IG Bilen de Kunst is. Uh, in English, we call ourselves Association of Visual Arts in Austria. So the organization was founded uh, 65 years ago in Vienna and it operates nationwide. The purpose of the, of the um, organization was to uh, fight for the, for the rights of uh, visual artists in Austria and for the improvement of their economic and working conditions. So basically the first thing Ige Bilen de Kunst did was, uh, it was founded by other uh, artist associations such as the Secession, Kunstlerhaus and some other local uh, art organizations with the main purpose to fight for the social and economic rights and for improving the living and working condition of artists. So we have very specific expertise. On the other hand, uh, we are the representative on the national level, on the international level of Austria and all these organizations uh, within the terms of International Artists Association Europe and Art International Artists Association World. So basically we are the so-called national committee which gives us, of course, the possibility to exchange uh, our uh, experience and to network with international partners. All the other organizations are more or less uh, dealing locally. So, I don't know, okay. So basically, I'm going to talk about the different models for exhibition and artist fees, how we started, about the fee categories and the current gu guideline we are working on, we are finalizing it. I'm very happy that this is the first uh, international or public uh, occasion I can talk about this as well. And of course, there are a lot of challenges. So um, the situation in Austria looks like that. Most of the institutions started paying exhibition or artist fees uh, the last few years also because we all initiated this uh, uh, dialogue and started talking a lot about this. But also due to the fact that many international artists came to Austria and uh, demanded these fees, this also made an impact. So basically the last few years, we can say that there is a progress in terms of payment of the artists and the uh, way how the work of the artists being valued by institutions, by subsidy givers and supporters, but also by the artists themselves. So maybe it's not only because of us, but I think that uh, the fact that we initiated this dialogue and share it with different uh, organizations, uh, artists associations and groups of interest made also the impact. We started in 2013 with few public discussions and research about uh, different models of uh, calcul and like fee calculators or how our colleagues um, from other countries uh, deal with this issue. Basically, we had to find out that bigger art institutions in Austria do not pay exhibition fee or whatsoever artist fee unless you're a very famous artist and you already know how to negotiate it. So, Funny enough, few of the institutions we interviewed back then uh, and we just had public discussions with uh, now pay artist fees and they're very happy that they do so. So the other thing was uh, not only the research on the national level, but as I said, being able to network on international level with other artist associations within the frame of IAA Europe, for example, and uh, we had a nice exchange with uh, colleagues from Germany, of course, from Berlin, but also with uh, colleagues from Iceland and from Scandi other Scandi uh, Scandinavian countries. 
and uh, basically we found out that they had a similar problem. So uh, as Vahida said in the beginning, we all know that this is an ongoing struggle and uh, basically every country uh, this did, did like uh, solve it on their own, but there are similar patterns. So in 2016, we started with our campaign, Pay the Artist Now. Basically what we did was we produced some buttons and stickers and every time we went somewhere to negotiate our own budget, for example, for our association or to talk about other issues, we took all these uh, materials with us and every time we talked about money. So this is very important that uh, every time you have the opportunity to go public, to talk to uh, politicians, to talk to local politicians, the municipality, or to talk to other art associations that you just uh, put your demands on the table. And what we did was that we, uh, since I was back then responsible for the exhibition space of our organization, we decided uh, to start uh, creating a, our own model for fees so that we can publish it on our website and say, okay, this is our exhibition fees model. If you exhibit with us or have an artist talk, you get this money. So uh, we also made few exhibitions uh, related to this topic. Uh, 2016, it was the, it was the artist duo Umetnik. They're from Serbia, but they're based in Vienna. So they, they made a very interesting approach to this topic. Afterwards, we had another big show curated by my colleague, Carlo Bobodia, which was also with, was with two local artists from a different origin and made a pub small publication on the occasion of that. We had a fellowship with one institution providing scholarships for migrant artists. It was again Jelena Mitzisch who was part of that. Basically, we tried to spread this topic and to connect with uh, people we, we knew that they could be our allies. So basically we came to a national wide networking meeting in 2018. We invited our colleague Heidi Seal from, the, uh, from uh, BBK Berlin to present the so-called Berlin model, which is probably also for some of you very interesting, although it is very specific for the Berlin situation, but it is interesting because it shows how, where the money comes from for these fees. Uh, maybe we can discuss this later. We gathered people from Tyrol, we gathered people from, uh, from Styria, from Lower Austria. We had a lot of people from uh, other artist associations based in Vienna, like the Secession, Kunstlerhaus, uh, the Professional Union of the Artists, uh, a related organization to us, and some other people related to the scene. And uh, basically, we drafted a paper and we decided and we made some sort of mapping and roadmap to decide how to go further. We wanted to meet the year after, which wasn't possible. Then Corona came, but then we decided, okay, no matter what's going on, 2020, we have to meet. So the next, the next meeting was uh, the year after, uh, the last year in the autumn in Tyrol. We had again a lot of uh, interesting people, partly the same people from the previous networking meeting, but this time we also invited the people from the so-called Independent Space Index. This is uh, some sort of. Uh, it's not an uh, it's not an association, but let's say it is the group of people who um, run independent art spaces. Most of them are artists, so they know what is going on and when they get paid and how they get paid. So we had also their own perspective. So since then, there was a one lucky moment that the current Austrian government and the state secretary for arts and culture. Uh, is very fond of the idea of fair pay. So fair pay found in arts and culture found its way to the government program, which is very interesting because this government is anyways very, very specific thing. It is uh, a coalition between the right uh, conservative uh, people's party uh, reformed under the new chancellor plus the greens. 
So the cultural resort is part of the Greens. So the Green Party is in charge of the arts, culture, media, sport, which is a good thing. And uh, after some uh, changes within the uh, personnel, we got we gained uh, as a state secretary a woman who used to be the head of the art and Div uh, culture department within the chancellery. Uh, by the way, Austria doesn't have an own cultural ministry. This is also interesting because Austria states itself and stages itself as a cultural nation. But the last time we had a cultural ministry was a kind of maybe 10 years ago. So basically, um, since this process started, uh, the ministry called all organizations similar to ours, not only for fine art, but also for theater, dance, music, etc. So they have a working group. And since the working group was really very tough in schedule, we go were forced to start working on our guideline very soon. We wanted to have time to negotiate, to talk a bit more, to think about more, because it wasn't easy after the meetings. We realized that it wasn't easy to say how much does the artist work cost? How much can be can cost the participation in one single show? So anyways, now, since the January 2021, Ige de Kunst, together with the Rolle Künstlerinnenschaft, this is the Ar uh, Artist Association of uh, the region of Tirol, started working on a weekly basis on a guideline. So we are almost done. Now the guideline should be revised by our um, friends uh, from the, let's say, um, networking meeting, and uh, we hope that by the midsummer we can publish it officially. We have in the so-called so guideline, different fee categories and define the art, the, the, the payment of the work under very specific, or let's say very basic uh, conditions. First of all, we don't talk about artist fees, we talk about exhibition fees. So, as you can see, for us, the exhibition fees, the remuneration for the participation in a solo or a group show or project, regardless the amount of the exhibited works. The fee covers only the costs related to the communication, packaging, and checking up the condition of the works, presence at the setup, opening and dismantling of the show, if needed, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. This fee does not cover other costs such as production, travel, transport, insurance, and also does not cover the amount of time needed for the production of a new work. Maybe you will have questions on that because this is a very tough definition. I have to say that uh, while working on this guideline, we really had to think about every word and every, uh, every single sentence we use, because we know exactly that we will get a lot of questions from our colleagues. So we have different categories within the exhibition fees. We decided that in order to calculate the, in a, let's say, kind of fair way how much artists get paid for this participation in an exhibition, we need first to think about uh, how many people participate in the exhibition. So we have exhibition fee for a single show, two and three artist show, four to seven artist show and above eight participants. And we have also an extra uh, way to calculate the fee for artist collective. So the fee for artist collective is 1.5. Like if, is, if, if we say a single show will be 1,500 euro, if an artist collective have, has the single, the single show, the artist collective will get this 1,500 multiplied by 1.5. We have also other fee categories 
for artist talk, artist lecture, moderation of artist talk and panel discussions, which is always uh, all, often the case. Artists get invited to do some jobs. Performance was a very tricky moment, so we are still not very happy with the performance category, but at least we uh, put a category of performance when you perform a piece which is not especially made for an exhibition. We also, during due to Corona, we found out that it is very important to have a category about remuneration in case of cancellation, because so many events got, got cancelled last year and they're still getting postponed, postponed or cancelled, that uh, some of uh, the other uh, associations, such as the Translators Association, or the theater association, they started um, implementing such uh, remunerations or such fees of in case of cancellation. So we decided that it is important to have it. Uh, it is based on uh, the time when the cancellation comes, regarding on when the cancellation of the event or the exhibition comes, uh, if it is one month prior or three days prior, the artist will receive a certain percentage of the fee due, regardless the cancellation. Because we consider that art, the work on one exhibition or project starts when the, with the moment when a curator or another person contacts the artist, this initial moment when you get asked to participate or get invited to participate in a show. We also have other artist fees. These other artist fees are, for example, artist fee for the production of the new work, project or performance, for art in public space and other long-term projects, for example, artistic research projects. But for them, we don't have a firm amount. We have for this type of fees, since they're very complex, we decided also to implement uh, a fee scheme per hour, which we kind of kindly, uh, kindly got from the Tyrolean Cultural Initiative, since they have such a scheme, uh, like it's a calculate uh, a table with uh, different uh, jobs in the art and cultural sector and how to pay them per hour. So this we uh, adapted for visual arts and uh, with the profession or like jobs which are more popular within the art field or let's say visual art field. So the, this uh, scheme or table includes jobs such as exhibition setup, art handling, social media and PR for art projects, project management, research-based work, conceptual work and curating, artistic direction, exhibition display, managing director of art festivals and big scale projects, or also the art artistic work if you're on the way to create a new work. So it defines the recommended fees per hour for these types of works when regular salaries are not applicable. For the salaries in the arts and culture, there is another fair pay salary scheme by the IG Kultur Österreich. But of course, since artists are mostly freelancer, I, we, think, we think that uh, the best uh, combination will be to have this firm fee for the participation of the exhibition and next to that for variety of specific jobs uh, related to the exhibition or to an art project to have also this uh, table per hour. Uh, yes, here are some links. Unfortunately, nothing in English at the moment. We are planning once we are done with our guideline to uh, translate it in English so that it will be clearer for, first of all, for international artists living in Austria, but also for all other artists all over the world interested in uh, the way how in, we uh, deal with this topic in Austria. So shortly about the challenges. Many models and calculators, if, for example, the wage calculator define basic 
fees or minimum fees. We also wanted to do this because it has a, a variety of political reasons and implications. If you set minimum, this means that institutions should not pay less. So this should be kind of the basis for negotiations, for uh, calculating a budget and for good payment or let's say fair payment. There is in the European Union one very big problem. With it, with the problem is that there is something called competition law and free market regulation. In German, it's called Kartellrecht, which says that for this type of works, you cannot put a minimum of, uh, of payment. You cannot set it, you cannot predefine it because it kills this uh, free market regulation. So the biggest challenge now is how to call these fees and these amounts we set up, how to call them in our guidelines so that uh, people don't think that, okay, it says something, but it says 1,500 euro, but I can pay maybe 1,000. So this is a big challenge. And that's why our guidelines should be revised by the Arts and Cultural Division of the Austrian Federal Chancellery, like the, on the juridical level, so that we don't have problems later when we publish it. We are very cautious in Austria because years ago, uh, the Graphic Design Association called Design Austria published a similar guideline when they said minimum, minimum, basic, basic. And then the Austrian Chamber of Commerce came and said, no, this is not possible. You uh, you objecting this and that uh, regulations, so you're not allowed to publish it anymore. Years ago, I mean, they fought for years in order to make this happen. Now they have the, this uh, these guidelines published, but of course, we, with uh, different uh, with different wording. So this is something which we are considering now how to solve it so that uh, institutions mainly do not think that if it says 1500 that they can pay less actually they're supposed to pay more. Also, what is important is that uh, we know very, very well that even if institutions, artists and everybody involved in the process wants to implement this artist and exhibition fees that subsidy and funding will be missing. So this means that all the subsidy givers need to evaluate their budget so that the beneficiaries obtain enough support in order to be able to implement the guideline fees. So that it doesn't mean that they need to cut from other parts of the budget, but that there should be sufficient money. So this means that all the funding uh, should be evaluated. Yes, and actually our, our purpose is that artists and art institutions start implementing the guidelines when working on their project calculations. So the guideline is also as a tool for empowerment for the artists when they start negotiation, negotiating with an art institutions to know how much in average their work would cost. This will be probably a longer process uh, because uh, as uh, some mentioned, uh, some artists still do not consider what they're doing as a work. It is different, dif there are different ideas about what the artist is. Is, it, is the artist an art worker? Is it art is a worker at all? What is art and, uh, and it's so, so on. So these discussions we, we also have in Austria. The next steps, I said, this evaluation and the revision because of these obstacles and legislation uh, details we need to consider. We will have official launch on our websites and the press announcement, then publicity events. We want to make workshops for art institutions and for artists so that they learn how to implement the guideline, especially the combination between this firm amounts of fees and the amounts per hour and then we want to have a nice publication also to finish this process and this ongoing work for uh, ourselves so that we have a nice outcome of it and we will publish the 
let's say the numbers uh the beginning of next year because uh, if we want to have this table with the amounts per hour they need to be evaluated every year because they will be related to um a table of fees uh, provided by the union of the private employees or private workers so basically this will be something which needs to be evaluated every year yes yeah, so that was my part i hope it wasn't that long and uh, of course you can ask anytime anything which was not clear because i think that i was pretty fast right now Uh, thank you, Vasilena. Thank you uh, for a very uh, complete um, presentation. Uh, yeah, it was, maybe we will leave the discussion for later, just for the moment. Uh, uh, it's, I want to say like, it's very interesting for me, this uh, exhibition of this uh, uh, proposal. Uh, as it uh, seems, uh, like what you said, that it, it's uh, limited to the works that are quantifiable and that are not exactly uh, considering the main artworks. Like the, as you said, it's more like related to all the works that are needed to put the exhibition on, like installation and so on. And I just want to recall the. Recently, a friend of uh, mine, artist who uh, for years, and like I have more artists, friends who are working in the employed as uh, technicians on the installing the exhibitions in the museums. So, uh, and he he had a solo show in the same uh, exhibition in the same uh, exhibition venue. And uh, he was complaining that he earned much more money as a technician than for the exhibition fee. So, uh, but this is something very uh, usual that uh, we are facing uh, in our uh, uh, work experience. So I would like to go uh, now to Yura, uh, uh, Yuri, uh, from uh, SOTA, State of the Arts, and would like to ask uh, him to uh, explain uh, his experience a little bit from, uh, and I want just to say also, I forgot, I'm very sorry that uh, Dirk David is uh, here also uh, with us with the uh, Flanders Art Institute. And also Dirk, please uh, take part in uh, our uh, discussion if you want to say something uh, um, after. All right, hello. Um, I brought uh, uh, an almanac, which is a publication we made with State of the Arts in 2019. And I wanted to highlight some uh, some facts and figures uh, written down in the document. Uh, maybe I, I don't think I have enough for everybody here. I also send it by email. I don't know if you got it. Otherwise, I can sometimes maybe uh, show it to the screen. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm here on behalf of State of the Arts. Uh, we are uh, from uh, Belgium. Um, and we exist or are founded or started uh, in 2014. Uh, and one of the direct causes why uh, SOTA uh, started was uh, the heavily cutbacks in the arts budget in the Netherlands in 2013, if I uh, recall correctly. Um, and since then, uh, SOTA uh, uh, gathered, uh, maybe as a starting point to to uh to make sure that the same situation would not uh, happen in belgium uh as well um so uh i think to start with um the main uh mission statement or mission line uh that sota has is uh, that we're an open platform uh that tries to reimagine uh, the structures of the art world in uh, belgium uh, today um and we do that uh by uh, infor informing uh not re we don't work with members so uh 
we try to reach a wi as widely uh, audience as possible. Um, more concrete, we uh, work uh, with uh, six different uh, anchors, um, which are actions, uh, coalitions, uh, communication, politics, fair practice, and movement. Uh, more concrete, that means uh, that uh, the action uh, anchor group uh, focuses on uh, try to react to what's happening. Uh, and, and, and you can think of organizing protests, for instance, uh, but also uh, smaller actions. Uh, the coalitions group uh, focuses on uh, involving not uh, artistic uh, partners to, to our, our movement, so to say. Um, and that's a really important point for us. Uh, we try to not only focus on uh, on involving the art world, but also try to make coalitions with uh, students protesting for uh, ecolo uh, for the environment. Uh, uh, we try to reach out to to healthcare workers, uh, uh, people uh, without papers in Belgium, and we try to support them uh, wherever we can because. Uh, on the one hand, uh, out of solidarity, but on the other hand, uh, because uh, this, the, the struggles or the, 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 the problems we are facing are not unique for the arts field, but are also uh, applicable to teachers, uh, so on, so on. Uh, other anchors, communications, with, which I think speaks for itself, uh, uh, politics, uh, what was it? We uh, oh, she's not in the room. We had a funny uh, conversation this week about how to uh, uh, explain in English uh, what we are doing, and we came to the conclusion that it wasn't lobbying but advocating more so. Uh, fair practice, voila, that's uh, the almanac is one uh, concrete output of 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 that uh, of that movement. Um, and then uh, the movement is, is also an interesting anchor because that focuses on uh, structurizing uh, the platform uh, state of the arts uh, because uh, uh, people tend to come and go and, and, and they are uh, they try to structure uh, the way we work and also try to uh, involve new, uh, new people within state of the arts. Um, Let's see, uh, because I wanted to start with uh, something in the almanac which made me laugh a little and is also uh, really easily and, and not complete, but uh, a nice uh, overview of how the art field is structured in, uh, in Belgium. It's seen on page 24. Um, sorry, I don't think that I can hear you, but do you all uh, have, shall I maybe show it that you can take a screen capture? Is that an idea? <laughs> all right, there we go. Is it totally seen now? <laughs> uh, you know the players on the board. Or share the screen. Yes, maybe it's easier to share the screen. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah, when my hand is it. And then um, I wanted to start with this um, because it makes a, fu a funny, so to say, uh, 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 or it explains in quite a funny way uh, the different. Uh, artists and, and and what i what i was saying before this is limited it's not complete but it shows how the art world world in belgium is structured in uh, in a nutshell uh especially the structurally funded artists made me laugh uh yeah because i i, I don't know one myself either uh but which is uh I, i'll leave the uh I'll, I'll leave the institutions out of it uh Maybe a small important note uh, on that is 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 uh, that they uh, 
the employees of the small uh, structurally funded uh, institutions face the same uh, precarity or in, in not not all of course but uh, some uh, face the same precarity that that artists uh, individual artists in belgium face as well so the the, the main uh, starting point i wanted to use is the uh, difference between artists that have the artist status uh, and artists that don't have the artist status in Belgium uh, because what is the artist status it's actually not um, a status of employment it's a measurement of um, unemployment in, in in Belgium and Dirk uh, if, if I uh, if you want to add something uh, feel free to do so in the comments or I don't know raise your hand um, uh, because that's uh, it's not unique, but it, it's it's uh, it's an important uh, uh, reality uh, Belgium artists have, um, and the idea also, in a nutshell, is that uh, you can be compensated as an artist for the uh, for the days that you aren't working uh, by the uh, federal government, uh, which is also uh, important to say. Sorry, I forgot. Uh, so uh, the Belgium uh, arts uh, law or, or, or the, the, the legal uh, framework is uh, 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 structured by the uh, regions. So the Flemish region, uh, the French speaking uh, Wallonia uh, is a region and uh, Brussels is a region on itself as well. Um, but the artist status is a measurement of employment, unemployment, uh, which is a federal uh, regulated. So there's also uh, some conflict. Uh, it, it's it's sometimes easy for the uh, for the Flemish government to say no. I'm sorry, that's a federal measurement. So things move slow sometimes to uh, make changes in Belgium. Uh, all right, so sorry, the artist status, is federal, me uh, federal measurement. Uh, yeah, and it's an unemployment uh, measurement, which means that you can be compensated for the days that you haven't been working uh, as an artist. Um, but as it says here, uh, the, stat the status is very fragile and the pro uh, procedures around it are unclear, uh, which means um, that around 10,000 artists uh, uh, in Belgium uh, have uh, have that status right now, but it's uh, reviewed every, uh, I think every year even. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's it's a constant battle to, to remain uh, that status. And uh, right now, actually, they are uh, planning to uh, reform uh, uh, the legal uh, framework for the status as well. Um, meaning that you uh, to to uh, enter uh, the status or to 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 get to get it, uh, you have to prove that you've been you've earned uh, around ten thousand euros in three years as an artist, which is uh, uh, a step forward in comparison to the last status because then you also had to prove uh, worked hours, and now it's only uh, budget wise because yeah. Uh, of obvious reasons, uh, artists cannot always uh, prove work hours, especially visual artists. <laughs> um, but then you also have the project-based artists uh, without the artist status, um, and those, uh, uh, yeah, faced especially when uh, Corona came, uh, the hardest difficulties because, uh, yeah, on, on March 2020. Uh, their income uh, was reduced to uh, 0, 0.0, and uh, the, uh, we had uh, we've done hard work, uh, not only state of the arts, but also uh, a lot of other uh, organizations in Belgium, uh, to make that clear to the government because it took. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Dirk, but I guess around 100 days before uh, the first measurements came. Uh, for the artists uh, with uh, in general, but it was the most important, of course, for the artists without the artist status. Um, on a side note, uh, what we did uh, with uh, State of the Arts, and I found it really important to uh, 
to address that here is that we, uh, in May 2020, uh, released a tool which is called SOS Relief. Uh, I think I sent it, I, I emailed also a link, but it, I'm, I mean, Google it, it speaks for itself. And it's basically a, a, a tool uh, based on uh, radical solidarity. Uh, and what it does in a nutshell is it, uh, it, it matches uh, people that can miss something with people that need something, which was really important, especially uh, right up until today, but especially in the first time uh, of COVID when uh, the savings ran out and people had to pay the rent. Uh, uh, it really made a difference. Sorry. So, so uh, the, the, the idea is that, that the people that uh, need something can ask a certain amount of money. I think it is 50, 100, 200, and 400 euros. And people that uh, can miss something uh, pay that and they couple them and you transfer it directly. So there's no uh, involvement whatsoever. Uh, um, Let's see. Uh, did I miss something about SOS relief? Uh, yes, and 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 um, I think th that model is 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 interesting. Uh, that's why I brought it up uh, because it's also another way of looking at at at, at money at value. Uh, uh, I think a, a really uh, important difference was made uh, when we. Uh, addressed uh, more so to the people that work in institutions and have a full-time salary and 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 uh, it was really uh, effective to address to them directly uh, these artists fill your institutions you have solid income uh, please support them so donations were coming always from the private uh, people not from the foundations or no no the, in, in by as well as relief specifically uh, uh, donations came uh, for privately yes private. yes mm -hmm. I, I think some institutions donated as well uh -huh. i'm not gonna mm -hmm. name the list now uh, okay just a question uh, uh, what are the prerequisites to define the artist status proof of exhibitions or specific working about or I, if i can uh, intervene you actually, um, answered, what? Already. You actually uh, answered already because uh, you were but i read it uh, prerequisites for the art, yeah. artist status uh, well, one one specific one, um, my uh, is that the 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 amount of your of your uh, unemployment uh, uh, rate is evaluated by uh, now. I think I think that's going to change, but by the last month uh, of of work. So so, I know people that that only uh, that have a really low. Uh, uh artist status and and it's really hard to to uh review that so uh once you're in that system uh, uh yeah you're basically stuck uh with uh a, a low uh wage uh and other precarities are uh that it's uh, that it's uh renewed every year so it's a constant uh battle so to say to 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 keep uh, the status uh, another thing that's not taken into account and that's really important, I think, to uh, stretch out here as well, is that um, uh, fair pay and fair practice, but we're going to go more into detail later, um, is, is, is in the law there in Belgium. There's a minimum wage uh, you have to pay. Um, the problem is that that let's say hypothetically you make an as you are involved in an exhibition and you're being paid on the three four days uh, uh, you build up the exhibition so to say um, uh, you've been paid fair but the the as as uh, as was mentioned before um, the days that are are in preparation are uh, not taken into account there. And I think uh, that a really uh, good solution for that would be to uh, 
to work with uh, uh, an, an indexation, so to say, uh, as for instance, teachers uh, who stand in front of the class for eight hours uh, get a preparation time for eight hours as well. I think that would be for artists a really good measurement uh, to be taken into, uh, into account too. Um, all right, let's move on because um, Do you need to continue later? Ah, yes. Or, so we just uh, let all the people uh, do yeah, some sure. introduction right. and then we go yes. to the other all right. questions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, we are moving forward. I, I would like uh, now maybe to invite uh, Lucrezia or even from like let's say Lucrezia and after even uh, to explain briefly like the a little bit about the association and uh, the, what they did uh, also related to the other things maybe not just uh, on uh, economic um, issues okay I will uh, I will share my screen um I prepared okay. um this is new too. Okay. So I will just briefly introduce our tour in Italia and thank you so much for inviting us. And it's amazing to um to hear both SOTA with the I mean the organization we were a little bit more um acquainted with the with the projects, etc. But also Vasilena, thank you so much. I think you brought up like a number of topics that we have been struggling with a lot in the past months. So it's great to know how you solve those problems. And I'm sure we will go more into that. But just to give you a brief overview about our workers Italia. Um, we are a way younger organization. We were born, we were, we founded the organization one year ago. Um, so we are basically the first organization working towards art workers advocacy in Italy. It never existed before. And uh, everything started out a very informal group. Um, but now we became a formal association. Our, I mean, we have about 300 associates right now, um, but uh, almost a thousand people uh, signed our manifesto and we have a few thousands of uh, people following our activities uh, just to give you know an idea of, of the size of the institution and we are spread all over Italy because you know in Italy you have like a number of, of quite important you know people um, centers all around the, the place and we have also people living abroad that are interested in uh, conditions of workers in um, of art workers in Italy so our uh, goals, uh, of course, are to sustain art workers and specifically to work with experts to develop tools to sustain art workers and to protect them. And um, our, as, as the name goes, uh, we are trying to do that with a very specific focus on Italy, but with a also transnational look and endeavor. So it's very important for us, for example, this occasion to actually engage with in discussion and develop, you know, tools. Uh, that can be applied in Italy through the work that has been already done in other in many other countries, and um, also we have a very um, I, I would like to mention that because it was mentioned before we also think it's so important to actually coordinate in solidarity with all other categories of exploited workers. So that's something that we are really um, into, and uh, and of course like an intersectional kind of perspective even in anything that we do. So we really try to be careful at that. Uh, these are the categories of people that we kind of represent, even if uh, um, I would say that mostly we are curators and artists, uh, I would say like 60% of art of uh, artworkers Italia is uh, in these two categories, um, but definitely all the others are um, part of the process and we would like to, um, you know, also represent, let's say, even if it's not the right word, give a voice to these people. Um, our main goals can be described in these four R's, which are the um, R's that we also um, wrote in our manifesto, which are the recognition of the specificities of professions gravitating around contemporary art in Italy, because we don't have anything like that. We don't have a status of artist. There is really like a lack of even definition, which makes it even a, a almost a philosophical kind of question, right? Um, so what is an artist, etc. as we said, uh, the regulation of working relationships, 
the redistribution of resources and the reform of the whole contemporary art sector in Italy, which is pretty ambitious, I know, but we, we are really trying. Um, so something that is very important to say, which I mean, I'm not, I don't have to explain it to you as an audience, but that has been something that uh, was pretty important in the past months, because since we are a group of artists and curators and cultural workers, they always think that this is an artistic project, which is not. So the point is really not an artwork, but artwork. So this is a political um, endeavor we've been bringing forth. Um, and uh, we decided to have, we've been always trying to have a very horizontal kind of structure. And that also reflects in our graphic identity, which is not, um, you, you know, it's not like uh, a major theme, but I always li like to mention it because I think it's, um, it really tells something about how we work. Um, you can see here the instructions to actually write as you're writing when you are into AWI. And it's a, it's a very basic, you know, it's like the basic color, the most basic fonts, uh, typefaces. So the idea is really that anyone within the group or outside of the group can actually use that kind of identity to talk as AWI. Um, our fields of action, so the how we are trying to get to these goals are political pressure, of course, so pressure made uh, to policymakers, institutions, working with them. Now we are working, for example, with a member of the Senate, Senate to work on a, on a law to change it, to make it um, also inclusive for art workers and visual artists especially. Um, build templates and tools. So we work with experts in the legal field, in the fiscal field, in the um, even contractual field to actually develop samples that can be used for artists and art workers. Um, and then, of course, education, awareness rising and consultancy. So this is something that we do all the time, trying to um, create the understanding that we all need the equal pay and a de decent job. And that's something that has to be done, especially towards our own um, fellow workers, because uh, um, as you were saying before, um, sometimes artists themselves don't consider themselves as workers. So, so it's something that we have to do. We talk a lot with the academies, with institutions, with students, like it's really something that we've been doing a lot. So uh, long story short, the way uh, always was funded was really, as I said, super grassroots. We started as a um, Facebook group because we were at the beginning of the, of the first um, wave of the pandemic. And we just started by sharing materials that would be useful for everyone. So we had the, like, you know, this big Google doc in which anyone could put links about how to get some protection from the state, which is which was very little. The welfare state is very bad, especially for um, art workers in Italy. I'm just saying it. I'm sure it's, you know, you can relate to that in the, all the different countries that are represented here. But just to give you a, a quick idea of how is the, the situation. And uh, starting from this group, we started talking together a lot and we decided to write a manifesto together, which was a very important moment because somehow writing together uh, we also have an English version of the manifesto. I can share it with you if you um, if you feel like reading it or sign it. it was very important to uh, really locate the main goals that we had on a short term in terms of the pandemic, but also on a long term because what the pandemic made very clear is that the problems within the art the art system, of course, are structural. So the fragility that most workers encountered is not based on the fact that it was a, a actual crisis, um, but on the fact that it's structural. Structural. All the problems that we have are really um, inside of the structure of how the work is um, conceived and performed within our field. So this is a few, and that was also important, you know, to have a first moment to look at our names and see how many we were. And so to understand, you know, what we could do. And so we had about a thousand signatures, which was very important for us because then, you know, starting from there, it was way easier to develop the rest of the work that we've been doing. So the structure that we decided to develop at the beginning, as you see, this is mostly how we were bringing for, of course, like we are today, our meetings. So this is kind of like the image that we decided to use to describe ourselves for most of the months. So it's like a Zoom uh, meeting in which everyone is a worker. So um, at the beginning, we really wanted to develop a sort of movement. So it was important for us to be faceless in a first moment, to develop an independent voice from all of the institutions, because of course, most of the people within AWI either work in the institutions of contemporary art or with the institutions of contemporary arts, where mostly freelancers but we are 
I mean, the, the art system in Italy is big, but not that big. So of course, we are also involved most of the time with the institutions that we are trying to, um, you know, negotiate with. So uh, this was a very important thing for us. Now it's slightly changed, but I'll go into that later. And this was our first uh, um, division. So we decided to divide ourselves in working groups. Some of them are still present, like the communication team and the editorial team, of course, are still uh, very relevant because they're it's technical groups and then we had a working group studying foreign, foreign models so models that would be uh, used to um, you know develop similar models to apply them to change them to make them work within the Italian context a focus on Italy which was related to the history of struggles in Italy and the history of artwork struggles especially so a sort of historical kind of base for our work instances and protections which is basically the beating heart of how we still now which was working on you know the social study of artists the fiscal protection contract protection what are the tools that already exist to protect yourself within the field of contemporary art in italy to develop new tools when needed and of course in the first moment of the of the building up of Awi was also very much related to developing and understanding which were the protections that art workers could try to get from the government then we had a group specifically related to non-for-profit non associations because somehow they are the closest let's say institution non-for-profit institution mostly small scale that are related to our our job um, so this is how it looked like most of the time and these are also a lot of meetings that we had like we had conversations with a lot of institutions like a lot of uh, uh, universities uh, in international groups just like us today like for example here you can see um cultural workers alliance greece uh, which doesn't exist anymore unfortunately um any um an encounter with the russian non-for-profit group advocating for artists which is called ice cream factory um so also the discussion with all of this group was very important for us and somehow we were contacted by most of these groups so that was also something that was very good for us because writing the, the manifesto in english and spreading that around was really helpful because somehow we we heard about you know groups in latin america that developed the manifesto starting from our manifesto and that is exactly the idea like that manifesto i think it's something that is completely completely uh, shareable and that should be um, should be copy pasteable, let's say, by anyone who can recognize themselves in that. Um, so the way in which we are structured now, somehow all the work of research that we've been doing in the past months, let's say 10 months of research that we've been doing independently, now developed in more structured collaborations with experts, as I was saying, and I wrote just a few names here um, of the people we're working with. So we have actively a contract, we are paying these people to help us out in terms of technical issues. And of course, from the dialogue with the, you know, academies, universities, institutions, non-for-profit fellows uh, all over the world. And uh, so now we're more goal-based. Our working groups are more divided into, you know, clear object objectives that we want to bring forth. So we're working on uh, regional actions, national actions, European actions. So um, we're really trying to develop ways to sustain the work in different scales. We, are, we have been working, and I'm going to show you a little bit of that, on the first art workers survey in Italy, never done one before, which is crazy. Um, and I can go more into, I mean, it could be quite, if you, if you are a nerd of surveys, I can go more into like the sociological kind of structure that we use, but um, I guess maybe it's not the, the moment now, but what, is, what matters for us is that the first thing that we understood is that numbers were lacking in general, about how many artists there are in Italy, how many, institutions there are in Italy, uh, how much people get paid, like there's also sort of stigma of not talking about, you know, how much you get paid and not understanding that we are all kind of like in the same boat in that sense. Um, so we really needed a way to find scientific numbers that could be used and brought to the tables of power in a way to policymakers to actually have change. Um, so that was one of the first things that we did and it's going to be published within the end of the month, the results of the, of the survey. Then, of course, we're working on remuneration uh, on a remuneration chart as well. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the maybe adding up uh, on the questions that were already brought up on contracts together with the with the law experts. So we will have models of contract that artists can use in different occasions, like for with the commercial gallery or with a museum like institution, or so that you can actually um, make sure that your work is protected because. A, a huge amount of work done in contemporary art in Italy is right now unregulated, no contracts, like um, 
we call it black work in the same in the sense that it's in the shadow um and um Another thing that we did that was working on hyperunionization, which instead was a European um, grant that we won to develop a, a sort of uh, um, transnational dialogue in terms of you know, understanding what can be done in, uh, in, uh, within the context of contemporary art in Europe. So um, just to give you a few examples of the things that we've been doing in the past months, re very recently, so just in the past three, four months, while uh, COVID was happening. So we, we also made this campaign, come in, we are closed because we were inviting people to come working with us. And by the way, this is a question that I wanted to ask to everyone, like how do you sustain your realities? Um, because that is something that we are struggling with right now. We have, we are all volunteers. Um, so we are also trying to understand how if, to uh, get paid and how for what we've been doing and how to structure that. One mm, first reason, because you don't have enough money to pay everyone. And also because this is an activist, of course, kind of practice. So we also don't want to make it become our jobs. Like we, I am a curator, I want to be the curator, <laughs> but also this is something that I, I find it so necessary to be able to actually perform my job, right? So this is something I would be super curious to hear. This is one of the first events that we had in real life, which was amazing uh, to be able to do that. It's the final event with, that we did after one month of occupation at the um, uh, Piccolo Teatro in Milan. And uh, this is something that is very important to understand the Italian system in a way, because people, I don't know if it's the same in your countries, but uh, people working in the theater field or in the performing arts, in the showbiz, are way more syndicalized than people working in the arts. So what we have been doing, especially in this period of protesting, is follow what they were doing and trying to develop a conversation with them and learning from what they already got in terms of struggles, in terms of you know, successful uh, negotiations with the institutions. Um, so this was the final event and uh, it was very important for us because we invited this senator, as I as we was mentioning before, um, who together with other senators are developing a law, which is the first law um, developing a status of the artist in Italy. And in that specific uh, text, the visual artist was never mentioned. So you had like theater, actors, um, cinema, circus, but no one talking about visual arts. So this law was going uh, to be uh, you know, produced without us being involved in that, without a whole sector of the cultural field not being included in that. And so we decided to make a, a few uh, proposals for editing to this, uh, to this law, and we invited the senator to look at them together, and he accepted. So now we're in the process of getting the visual artists and visual art workers included in this uh, law. Um, which was a very big first success for us in terms of laws. And um, so you can see that on the left, it's the AWI team. And in the middle, you have the senator and the director of the general um, cultural direction in Milan. And on the right, you have two of these experts that we are constantly working with to ask them for specific technical details, just to make sure that what we do is um, very precise and usable in terms of uh, technical, uh, legal language and, um, and techniques, basically. So this is the law passed at the Senate. So we're very enthusiastic about this, this last month. And then we, we also brought up a conversation, for example, with the region because region, Italy is very much region-based region in terms of funding, in terms of like um, even policies sometimes are enacted by the region itself. Uh, so we, de we developed a conversation with the region Lombardy, for example, but, but with many other, this was just to tell you one example. And in that case as well, we were able to um, ask them to um, pursue some um, support measurements for the artists. I will not go too much in detail uh, with this because it also is very much related to the Italian system and law, but um, uh, what we are understanding in developing these dialogues is the complete lack of understanding of how the cultural system works. Like even the, the kind of proposals that, that, that uh, are done, even when someone wants to do something to help the contemporary art system, they really do not get how it works, which is a huge problem. It's kind of like we are in a bubble and they can't um, understand what we are doing. But even with the theater, uh, you know, with the theater workers, you know, they expect you to be an artist and then to, to have to go to the manifestation with the, uh, you know, the paintbrush. So it's really like a lack of understanding of how, um, you know, post fordism work somehow. somehow. Um, in terms of the survey, uh, what we I just wanted to mention a couple of, uh, of data that we just recalled from the from our survey. And uh, for example, um, in 2019, 
and 2020, but this is uh, related to 2019, 2020, it's even less. Um, almost half of the people who answered to the questionnaire uh, said that they earned less than 10,000 euros a month, uh, year. So this is the situation. And um, most of them have to run a second job outside of contemporary art to be able to sustain themselves. But these, uh, given the fact that, and you can see that uh, here in, uh, at the top, that most of these people have higher education, extremely high level educations in contemporary art. So they're extremely professionalized pers persons who just can't do their job because uh, the income that they receive is too low. Um, so, you know, it's all things that we already knew, but having the numbers to show that it's very important for us. Um, hyper unionization, I didn't want to go too much into, into that, um, but just uh, to say that we developed these roundtables and one of them was very much related to this topic, so um, I wanted to mention it. Um, uh, the roundtables were like how to strike, how to institute, how to get paid, and somehow they uh, kind of uh, synthesize the work that we've been doing together with other institutions in the past month and uh, um, how to get paid specifically was related to the work that we've been doing to understand how much and how to um, develop uh, artist fees. So um, we, of course, as, as I said, we looked at foreign models. So for example, here you have Platform BK, which, is, which has been a very important reference, Wage, which was mentioned before, um, Trabajadores de Arte Contemporáneo, which is uh, an institution based in Mexico, but it develops like it's related to seven different countries in the Latin uh, Latin America, and so we're trying to pick, you know, a little bit of elements from all of these different systems and trying to understand what can work in Italy, and we're doing that referring to. Uh, interviews we're doing with institutions. So for example, here you have, so we, we listed a number of institutions in Italy, um, different in terms of scale and nonprofit, public, uh, private, to understand what are the policies that are right now enacted to pay or not to pay artists and art workers. And uh, I think it's really interesting what, what happens through these interviews because somehow, of course, on one side, it's very important for us to know what's going on so that we can actually develop tools that can be implemented in these institutions. But at the same time, it's really making these people aware that this is a topic. Sometimes we even need to have these conversations because maybe directors don't even didn't even think that that was an option. Um, and in terms of, of what Varilena was, Vasilena, sorry, was saying before, in Italy as well, it is uh, something that really started in the past few months during the pandemic, I would say, to be a thing that you would pay fees to artists. It's something that nev was never done before. And it's still mostly not done. So, um, so we're working on a, you know, the draft of this of this uh, chart, of course. And I think some of the questions that you that you raised uh, were very important in terms of, you know, whether to have like a minimum wage or whether to have an equal wage, and how when you get a minimum wage can you negotiate to have an equal wage? For example, Platform BK decided to use the minimum wage of the Netherlands, but we don't have that. Like in Italy, Italy and Greece are the only two countries in Europe that don't have a minimum wage for all the you know working sectors, so we don't have that number that can be used. Or for example, how to when you de decide the number of how much people should be paid, how are you able Able to preserve the work of non-for-profit smaller institutions who definitely cannot afford to pay that amount of money to artists. That is another question. So we were thinking, for example, if it would make sense to uh, find a way to regularize pro bono work so to make sure that the free work that we all do somehow is uh, uh, regulated so that you can actually develop, uh, um, decide to do underpaid work, but knowing the fact that that is underpaid work. So that is the first step that we would like to uh, implement because of course there will be a long process to actually be able to enable a fair, um, a fair um, wage to people working. And in this sense, it was very interesting what, what you were talking about in terms of uh, you know freelance work and uh, um, not freelance work that was also something that we've been struggling a lot in terms of like how can you calculate an hour based price when you're actually mostly freelance so project based kind of working and i think your kind of combination of the two really works well so that is something that uh, i would love to look into more because that would really solve one of the um, biggest issues that we have in defining this and uh, something that's else that we've been looking at is uh, and I think also the the fact of the of saying exhibition fee instead of artist fee really helps out in terms of like talking about 
what is performed, the job performed and not the role. This is something that is very important, I think, in terms of like changing also how um, the structure of how we think about getting paid, right? So um, this is something that we can, of course, we will go more into details uh, later on. So just finishing this presentation, uh, something else that we started to do, especially after seeing the results of the, of the survey we did is organizing real life meetings in all the different regions. So we're, in, uh, we're doing that slowly. First of all, to meet people we have been working on for the past months, and sometimes we didn't even meet each other in, in person. So it was really uh, something out of like seeing each other in real life, but also to really be able to develop uh, um, monitor, moni monitor, you say that, to monitor um, what are the best practices or the not good practices that are being developed in all of the different regions. So to kind of like have a widespread understanding of the system of contemporary art in Italy. Um, and of course, what we have been doing a lot is mobilizing so we uh, just very enthusiastically to cover the streets together with the you know the companion from the um, as I said theater theater field uh, so you see you know of course most of the time was occupied theater so stuff, stuff like that because we couldn't uh, we were not enough to occupy a, a museum but slowly it's getting it's getting really really better so um, yeah I think this was what I wanted to share with you and then we can go into depth about the uh, the chart for the remuneration Great, thank you, uh, Lucrezia. There is lots of things I, I would I like to add also to the your presentation or Jerry's or uh, and there is maybe just to say now because I'm not going to obviously do it. There is uh, more people to to present and we are short with the time, but uh, I'm. I'm like there's lots of similarities in, in uh, what we did in this um, with uh, in this uh, period from the pandemic. So we did in association of artists also two uh, sur uh, surveys, like one on the beginning of a uh, pandemic, just to see like how many people will be affected in uh, just to have like uh, to get some um, information, like how many people are, uh, will be uh, affected uh, are like. Uh, uh, seeing that they will be affected and like for example we found that uh, like three quarters of artists will stay without total or uh, like a majority of their like incomes during the pandemic and then this after like pushed us to make a like bigger survey just to understand what is the going on on uh, terrain and um, yeah there is a uh, like dates that are really um, very, um, how to say, like a, a, a pessimistic in the way that, uh, like, yes, we have like a, a minimum wage, and 50% of the artists have uh, their uh, like income is less than a minimum wage, or, or like much more than less than a min minimum wage, and so on, so on, their families. Really, uh, they have to do other jobs. It's like all uh, uh, same set of uh, things. And also we initiated the Solidarity Fund that is uh, uh, similarly organized also to uh, help um, to, uh, to help the uh, artists who, who are not get, uh, going to get the um, uh, aid and so on. I'm just thinking now, should we go to I Ivan or maybe to Anna? Uh, would you like Anna to present it? No, okay, <laughs> wait, then. Uh, so Ivan, please. Uh, hi, 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 can you hear me? Uh, I will, uh, I'm talking to you uh, from Slovenia. I will uh, present. Ah. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Can you hear me? Can I go on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I will present to you um, uh, our uh, effort to uh, compose a, a, a price list or a fee uh, list for uh, uh, for uh, um, for uh, illustrations. Uh, it was done under uh, uh, an organization, our uh, uh, main uh, visual artists organization, ZSLU, which is similar to the Austrian uh, uh, IG Bildende Kunst Association or, or uh, our uh, Serbian um, 
host uh, and it uh, uh, it includes a lot of uh, visual artists of different kinds also there is a section of uh, illustrators and this section uh, did try to uh, compose a price list for um, uh, for uh, for illustration work uh, why we try to do this is is because of uh, the prices uh, the fees were uh, falling and are still falling uh, and uh, and we uh, thought this would um, you know, reverse this uh, process uh, um, uh, the, the prices the reason for, for, for the falling of uh, the prices for the lowering of the prices is of, uh, is of course uh, Lower print runs. The print runs. Uh, this is a, a process uh, known to all European countries. Uh, also, uh, uh, the governments are uh, less interested in funding culture in any uh, way. So, of course, this is another reason for uh, uh, for uh, uh, our uh, fees uh, the, for the lowering of our fees. Uh, but uh, you know, also this this general process of uh, well, being concentrated into in hands of a uh, few people, uh, but uh, what we uh, thought and we we think is true is that also illustrators themselves, uh, especially young uh, and unexperienced, uh, uh, were not um, uh, very uh, good at negotiating prices and were. Uh, themselves uh, um, uh, accepting prices that are uh, way below um, living, uh, which were, I mean, they, they were accepting prices that are uh, with which it is impossible to live from illustration. And we thought that uh, a price list, a fee list, uh, would uh, would uh, would solve this problem. It would give uh, young people, young artists, uh, uh, some orientation uh, in uh, uh, setting the price for their uh, for their work. Uh, but it would also give uh, companies um, uh, like a red line, a minimum uh, wage of some sort uh, below which they, uh, we naively thought, would they would not go. Uh, but also in this way, we would like break the stigma of talking about um, about uh, uh, art or uh, illustration as uh, as work, as work that. Of course, as all work needs to be paid and uh, needs to be paid uh, fairly. So we tried to compose this list, and um, and we did um, make it, uh, but uh, we never came to um, to the point of publishing it and making it um, um, public. Uh, it is uh, for many reasons. Uh, and uh, um, it is that some colleagues uh, thought that uh, setting uh, um, uh, prices at a minimum uh, uh, would uh, would uh, lower their own uh, prices. Uh, that is to say, uh, if we set uh, um, the prices, if we publicly, uh, if we publish minimum prices, those prices would eventually become standard and usual prices for all artists. And in a way that would not mean that uh, we would stop the fall of, uh, of the fees, but, but in a way we would be lowering them in effect. Um, there is another, um, uh, uh, the, the, the designers, uh, Slovenian designers also tried to do this and they did set their prices um, uh, in uh, three ways. They set the minimum price for a design, uh, the middle price or medium price and the uh, higher price for the uh, for their uh, designs. And it is from their experience, uh, it is uh, clear that everybody used the minimum price as the standard price. And this was what we, we were afraid. Of. That's one of the reasons uh, that uh, we did not uh, publish our price list. Uh, and uh, we did not want to make it. On the other hand, some colleagues thought that if we raise the prices, if we publish high fees, uh, the, our price list would become irrelevant and nobody would, uh, would, uh, would check it before, uh, 
for uh, negotiating their price. So in the end, uh, 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 this is a story of a failed, uh, failed effort. But what we did uh, learn in the process is that um, there is, uh, again, uh, with the young artists coming into market and not being able, not having the, the skills or the knowledge to negotiate their price, we did find out that we can help, uh, help our younger colleagues in a much uh, simpler way. Uh, and we started uh, educating them uh, about all sorts of um, uh, skills needed to, to negotiate a price. Uh, specifically for illustrators, this would mean uh, uh, knowing the, 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 the uh, copyright law, authors prava, I think uh, copyright law is the right translation, um, uh, and setting uh, the, 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 the copyright uh, in the in contracts, uh, knowing what to sign, what not to sign, and so we started a series of um, uh, lectures uh, and invited uh, everybody to join. Um, and this, uh, in, uh, in effect, turned to be a very um, uh, or somewhat uh, effective uh, way of, uh, of uh, making our position uh, better. Uh, we thought uh, that, uh, that uh, we would uh, bring these lectures to, to, to schools, to art schools. Uh, but of course, the, the pandemic, for obvious reasons, we could not do this um, yet. And um, uh, this, is, um, this, is what I, uh, uh, this is what I wanted to, to tell you. So maybe I make a little... Uh, uh, make it together. Uh, it's um, it's in the end that it's the the informing of colleagues. It turned out to be the most uh, effective way of uh, of uh, of um, of uh, bettering our position. So, thank you. Okay, thank you, Ivan. Okay, uh, thank you, Ivan. Um, it's also interesting and uh, telling uh, experience, I think. Uh, I would like now to, like, we have uh, Juliana arrived uh, uh, now, uh, right from the airport, and she will present. Uh, she just, uh, you just arrived, no? Maybe after the break, yeah. Uh, or now we have uh, Mildred Vargic. It's actually a member of our working group of uh, fair practices in uh, Association of Artists of Serbia, who uh, was uh, working among uh, other things also on this issue of uh, payment of the artists. And so, yeah, Mildred, if you would like to. Uh, yes, I can, I can, I can uh, say some short stories. Uh, how we started and what what we uh, what we done during this uh, period actually uh, 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 fair practice uh, working group uh, was formed uh, in the beginning of 2020 uh, initially to understand why uh, why position of visual artist is so unfavorable uh, and also uh, uh, what all the uh, problems are, and uh, more importantly, uh, which uh, would be the step uh, to uh, to change such situation. Uh, it is especially disturbing that uh, there is no fee for exhibitions for for visual artists, uh, uh, which, however, existed in the beginning of to, actually in in first decade of uh, 2000 till 2013. Uh, so uh, it was established that it functioned thanks to the political will of uh, city authorities in that period. And it has been taken away uh, at the first moment when the state was in crisis. Because the, that compensation was not institu institutionalized. Uh, the, the basic task was to find mechanism to make royalties obligatory uh, for visual artists. Uh, so the project towards to horizontally of uh, 
uh, in art made it possible to define uh, the problems on which we can uh, work. Uh, we had a uh, good focus and efficiency of the group. So uh, one part of the uh, group dealt with the uh, fees for exhibition and the other with, uh, with taxation of uh, royalties. Actually, uh, we realized that it's, uh, it, it goes together uh, because we cannot uh, have a good fees uh, if, if uh, taxation of royalties is uh, so high. Uh, 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 with that, we are making, uh, we made uh, guidelines uh, where we define the principle of fair practice, presented the result of uh, our research and also a proposed price, price list. Uh, so the ULUS Fair Practice Working Group calls for equality and establishment of the equal rights for all, um, all participants in change of art production in order to build a system of sustainable cultural production and professional art scene. So the principle on uh, which uh, fair practice is built is uh, uh, ethics, solidarity, the joint responsibility of participant in uh, artistic production, fair distribution of uh, funds and rewards according to uh, personal eng engagement of, of artists. Uh, so during the project, we made uh, comparative ana analysis, and we uh, we use uh, that uh, that uh, brochure from uh, symposium uh, from Brussels in 2018. Actually, it was important to uh, to see the experience of other countries. Uh, 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 how, how they how they are financing exhibitions uh, exhibition activities and that it, uh, and we saw there that it didn't uh, not happen uh, 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 fast how how i can say uh, people put a lot of efforts to, to to have some results and actually in much more developed countries they uh, uh, the struggle is uh, still going on um, uh, so uh, then we researched the conditions in, in uh, locally in, in our uh, galleries and what's happening here. And uh, so uh, 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 conditions for production and realization vary from, from gallery to gallery, but uh, there is few galleries that they, uh, they gave uh, fees and uh, private uh, among the others, private stand stand out. Uh, so, from the process of the experience of others and insight into the situation here, we wanted to uh, to develop our own model uh, adapted to socio-economic situation in in which we live, uh, with the, the with the obligation that the composition should be legally prescribed. This is. This is something that uh, we would like to, yes, to, we worked on, on it. Uh, so, and we define what is a exhibition fee. It's a compensation for public uh, display in exhibition space while the work is inaccessible for, uh, for author for, for some other use. Uh, provided that institution does not sell or rent uh, work or uh, or uh, such work for direct or indirect property gain. Um, so the sustainability of this fee depends on the willingness of decision makers to standardize it through certain cultural policy instruments. So we, we have recommended some amounts for the exhibition fee in several categories. Uh, these recommendations are open to discussion with the uh, within uh, the association in order to finally define. So we, we recommended amount of the minimum exhibition fee for a solo exhibition is equivalent to the net minimum wage in Serbia or average net wage. Uh, then the amount of minimum exhibition fee for group exhibition of four till uh, 10 partic participants is approximately equal to weekly work fee for solo exhibition. Then a recommend, uh, recommendation amount of minimum fee for exhibition, a part of temporary structure such as a performance is approximately equal to 25% uh, uh, of the fee for exhibition as solo four week exhibition. So, and uh, for all categories, 
uh, uh, there is possibility to negotiate uh, for uh, for much more uh, fees uh, with uh, with galleries. Uh, and we also uh, made recommendation for uh, additional professional service as uh, guiding, uh, participating in debate, uh, workshop, and and so on. So first step to to realize that was uh, uh, was uh, to uh, to propose a ministry a ministry of culture culture uh, to uh, to make some change in in uh, in uh, competition for contemporary art specifically in the field of uh, fine uh, uh, fine visual and applied art actually to uh, to propose uh, 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 fees for for artists who uh, uh, who um, uh, uh, what I wanted to say um, so the recommendation for payment of fees to artists participating in project projects applied by galleries and similar institutions uh, so uh, on the exhibitions yes yes mm -hmm. so yes they uh, actually they uh, they promised uh, us that they will uh, implement. they will implement and actually they promised to organize uh, a meeting with uh, with the group for fair practice uh, of urus so so yes we are we are working still on it and we are hoping that they will they will they will do it mm -hmm. um, and the Yes, this is this is story about fees, and the other part of uh, of our project actually was uh, taxation in royalties, because uh, fees fee doesn't mean anything if if taxation is quite high, uh, like here. Uh, so, so that was the the second part, and. Um, uh, we, we we made some uh, enquete and actually we saw that uh, artists uh, are really dissatisfied with uh, with the taxation of royalties the toll is uh, really high and actually problem is that uh, put them that, that put them in uh, in in, in gray zone of uh, of business so uh, taxation of income from artistic work is not adequate because it's not fair for authors and does not respect the specificity uh, or nature of creative work. Although the Republic of Serbia is signatory to the UNESCO recommendation on the status of artists from 1980, which calls for creating favorable conditions for in independent artists. Uh, this led to the proposal of set of measures that would change the, uh, the bad fiscal policy within the visual arts and wider in culture. So the working group uh, responded to, uh, to the call for changes uh, to the law of personal income tax with proposal for amendments, which is sent to the Ministry of Finance in November in order to influence uh, the mitigation of gay economy present through various way of circumventing the law. Uh, the change refers to proposed uh, amendment uh, article to um, article 56 concerning the taxation of royalties in such way as to reduce the amount to be taxed. Maybe this is very yes, but I didn't want. The, but I just, uh, just okay for like uh, Serbian. Uh, yes, but just, mm -hmm, just in no. I don't want to to explain that. That's yeah, just to okay. to make it smaller that that amount to be taxed. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, among the others, the proposed measures would harmonize the type of authorial works with the changes that have occurred in contemporary production by integration performative and participatory practice in the field of visual arts. The existing multidisciplinarity of creativity in the field of science and art technology and their interaction to different forms would also be taken into account. Everything would result in improvement of the material position of authors and other holders of related rights who create their own works independently. Um, so there would be an adjustment to the solution for taxes based on types of authors creation and mitigation of economic 
vulnerability of authors and other holders of related rights who do not turn income regularly and continuously. And in addition, tax solution would be adapted to the nature of copyright creation without arming the state budget. According to the available data, revenues from copyright taxes participate in total tax revenues with about 1.2%, uh, uh, as we are talking about the low yield tax form. The proposed soft measure would not be burden on the budget. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Uh, Actually, we do, I just wanted to, 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 to say that we didn't uh, uh, answer from Ministry of Finance. It was uh, quite late, uh, uh, late. and um, because they adopted uh, amendments from the others, from uh, our association, they didn't. And actually that uh, answer uh, arrived uh, in March of this year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did you did you uh, address the the problem of um, uh, artist fees in the frame of uh, the October Salon that is uh, the major exhibition in uh, Belgrade, Serbia that will open in a few days? And uh, what I've heard is that they didn't uh, uh, communicate the fees for local artists at all. Yes. But uh, and I mean, th this would be the, the nice opportunity to yes. uh, communicate and to ask. Uh, yes, we didn't we didn't do that, but it's yes, it's a really important subject mm -hmm. to, to 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 research. And yes, yes, I know that. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 artists from ten from days, uh, ten years ago, uh, the same institution paid the fees, and nowadays. Uh, I think uh, they didn't address the question. Artists uh, are asking uh, each and every day, will we get some fee or not? Yes. And, it's really, uh, and they are not sure. They, they have no answer or, or they know, but they're not communicating. Uh, last night, uh, the organizer ah, exactly. communicate. Uh, did you put all the works uh, and can we uh, discuss the issue of fees uh, in a few days? But uh, I mean, it's not important. Yes, <laughs> but do you know what's happened with inter international artists? No, I don't have it. Mean, I mean, this is toxic. Yeah, well, of course. But can you go find out? We're meeting an artist who participated. Yeah, yeah, I know. Ah, good. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> sure, this okay. Is there's a, a local um, topic about the October yeah. Salon and the payment of artists. Yeah, I just want to, to give a, a broader picture, like the, the, the funds for culture in uh, Serbia, uh, it, it's uh, destinated like a 0 0.78, I think, uh, percent, for, but it's the, for the culture and information. Mm -hmm. So it means that for the culture goes only 0.47%. Uh, uh, and of this fund, only 3.20% uh, uh, goes to the production through the open calls uh, for the, the for the production of new works uh, of the like open uh, open calls of the minister uh, ministry of culture and uh, City Council and so on. So this is the picture. So like, just to understand when uh, like our group of uh, fair practices is asking, like demanding that, uh, because also galleries like are, are yes. public are, are like all private in a, uh, public galleries have to apply for the, their uh, annual program mm -hmm on the same uh, open oh, calls. Oh, yes. So it means that what they get are very insufficient uh, funds from uh, which uh, like, uh, I want to say that they usually work also in uh, precarious uh, conditions because we see that these funds are very small. Extremely to, small, yes. For and one. it usually just uh, covers the uh, like basic, um, uh, things that have to be uh, like infrastructure that uh, could make like the exhibition possible. Uh, 
and of course, but like all the rest of these uh, funds, you know, goes for, to the salaries of employ, like for the renovation of, uh, I don't know, like some historical buildings uh, or for promotion, like everything goes to promotion, it's a big word and so on. Uh, Dirk said uh, he would like three minutes to explain, uh, to give some uh, additional explanation. Dirk, are you here? Yes, um, um, and, uh, thanks for the fantastic uh, presentations of um, uh, Lucrezia and Ivan and also Vaselina. So I don't want to make uh, time, take too much time. So we, in Belgium, we have more or less the same trajectory with artists and arts artist organizations. To, um, to agree on a collective remuneration framework. And I think we will get there in September. Um, the, just some things that I didn't hear yet and I would, wanted to add is that uh, also in, we try to, to calculate time, um, not just the price list, but it's the time that counts. And we did an exercise with the artist also to, to calculate everything that we do. So all the kind, the kind of invisible, work or the preparation, the research, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, um, to see how much time you uh, you spend as an artist on a project. Um, and also to have that uh, knowledge to share that knowledge also with the organizations who invite you. And I think what Lucrezia said is really interesting because at least you make it visible what how much time you did spend. And then of course there's the possibility to um, um, to say what you really bring into account or not, or what the organization is able to pay. Um, the second thing is that um, if you take time, there is also this always collective labor agreements um, in which there is salary scales. And so in Belgium, we also thought maybe some work needs a lot of responsibility for the artists and maybe is a higher um, uh, salary scale than the remuneration of time um, for maybe um, more executive uh, work. And another thing that is uh, important is the compensation for existing work. So sometimes artists are invited for an exhibition and they, they need to do anything. Their work is in private collections or in collection of museums. And they just agree that these works can be showed in the exhibition. And then if you take time as a basis, then well, there is no time that the artist did spend. So at least with the compensation of uh, existing works that will be shown for one month or two months or three months, you can also agree um, on a certain prices. You could call it rent or you could call, call it auto rights, but at least as an artist, you are also re remunerated or compensated for the work that has been shown uh, publicly. And the last thing, I think it was already mentioned also this notion of transparency and like equal uh, relations um, and transparency means that uh, you put everything on the table from both sides. Uh, it should also include risk because even when you start a project, um, you can say, well, it costs so much money and um, it will take so much time, but there is always this like unpredictable it can take more time, it can cost more. And often the, uh, the case that the museum says, oh, but we agreed on that amount of money. So there is more time or more money needed. And then often the artist put the money. But uh, this is also something that I think you can uh, include in a discussion from the beginning. What if, what if um, certain um, applications didn't work as we thought that they would work or what if um, suddenly the, um, the, the, the project takes more time. And the idea also to sh of sharing, sharing the risks and also sharing the costs. And this is a difficult one because often the organizations protect themselves and say, well, this is what we agreed on. Here is the line. Um, and then what you can do as an artist then just or reduce or maybe pay yourselves. So this is little elements that I wanted to add to the fantastic presentations of uh, Ivan, Lucrezia and Vaselina, which I thought were really, I, I learned a lot. Thanks so much.
Okay, thanks. Thanks, dear. Okay. So uh, uh, I would like maybe to invite Katya now to comment a little bit and uh, maybe to uh, give some, uh, yeah? yeah, is it okay? Maybe some, because she, she wrote also about wage and she lives in the US. So I think this is very good uh, example also mm -hmm. we can learn from. Okay, so I thought, uh, um, uh -huh. So I just wanted to point out a couple of things about wage, which you all brought up uh, and um, um, that pertains to the artist fees. Of course, the situation in US is different because there is no public funding and no regulation. So um, they were self-organized and it's a, it's a fairly grassroots initiative in the sense that they, um, that they didn't uh, that they didn't, uh, they didn't really, they're not, they're not related to any kind of government regulation as uh, in that sense. Uh, but what they also did as, for instance, um, um, Lucrezia mentioned, they, they started with the manifesto. Uh, they then um, initiated a survey so that they would confirm that the fees are low. Uh, which we all know, but then they, they had some kind of numbers for that. And then they worked really, um, I think for a quite a long time to establish how they would uh, calculate these fees. And I think that one of the, one of the most interesting things that they did was A, that they defined, um, uh, you all brought up the idea of exhibition fee and not artist fee. Um, they defined the, uh, the, the work that the artist does for an institution, that they are in the relationship of a service. So you provide a service for the institution and then you get paid the, the fee, right? Uh, and um, the other, um, uh, I think, important thing was that they, um, um, because in US you also have a number of the different kinds of organizations, they're all mostly non for profit. Um, uh, that exhibit or work with artists, but they have budgets of of different variety, right? They can you can have I don't know an organization with thirty thousand uh, dollars of annual budget, and then you have uh, uh, non for profits such as MoMA uh, with the enormous amounts of budgets and so on and so on. So what they did was that they and I'm gonna try to show you. Uh, up, 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 up. Uh, they um, they developed this wage certification, uh, which is a voluntary uh, commitment of different non-for-profits that they are going to commit to pay minimum fees for artists. And um, uh, wage helps them. Now they have this all computerized and really digitalized, so they don't do it uh, by hand. They used to do it. It was really laborious. Um, so they developed a particular system of how they uh, generate these minimum fees for each organization, and this is checked, and then they get a certification. They have to do it every year. It's not a certification you get once, but you have to annually uh, prove that you are doing these minimum fees. And so they did the fee calculator, and I'm going to click here so you see it. Um, uh, and the, the important thing that I wanted to bring up was that, so you see here, these are different kinds of organizations and uh, uh, for everyone that on everyone that you, on each of the organization you go, you can see what is their total annual operating expenses. Uh, and so this number uh, is important for how much fees are they supposed to pay? Uh, to the artists. And so then you see solo exhibition, solo project, two person exhibition, blah, blah, blah. You go down for each of them. And the, these things change depending on what is their budget. So I think that that's one easy or uh, one elegant way of handling the discrepancies because you all mentioned that some uh, organizations have um, really low budgets. But still, uh, I think the culture of paying the artist is, or, and all other cultural workers for their work is important. And so even those who perhaps cannot afford, um, um, uh, let's say a normal fee, uh, they at least on a symbolic level can pay something. And that's, 
this is the commitment. So you don't have to face this constant uh, um, complaint of, oh, we don't have the money, we can't really pay you, blah, 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 blah. I mean, we have to start somewhere. So that I thought was important. And uh, the, so, and you can check all this on their webpage. Um, and the other important thing, which made me think of the situation here in, in Serbia right now with this October salon that uh, Vida mentioned earlier, is that uh, what Wage faced at the beginning was also that, um, um, that they were seen as uh, art workers who are a collective and that they would then be uh, so, somehow co-opted by all these art institutions. They would invite them uh, to, for instance, there was a big uh, group exhibition and they invited Wage to present their work. And what they did, and I thought was really important politically and strategically, they said, no, we are not going to present our work. We are going to negotiate the fees for all the artists because it was like a big group exhibition. And I think that it, that was at that time, because you know, wage is pretty, I mean, it's in, they were established in 2008. And I think that this is really important uh, in terms of how these initiatives of art workers get co-opted by the art system, right? We are all very radical, we are all uh, progressive, we are all super political and all sorts of crap. But at the end, when time uh, when push comes to shove and you need to pay the artists, they don't pay you. So I thought that that move from wage was really important at the beginning when they started to say, no, uh -uh, we are not going to exhibit on a nice uh, little poster what we do, we are going to negotiate these fees and that's what they actually did. Uh, and so out of that initiative later on, so they first developed the wage certificate for these minimum fees uh, that the organizations apply for. And of course it's a problem because MoMA is not going to apply for a wage certificate, uh, but some important institutions did. So they have already now 92 organizations. Uh, and another important thing that they did and this they developed later on, it's called Wagency. So let me go back. Um, this is more of a, an effort to go back uh, to towards a kind of unionizing artists. Oops, oops, let me see. Uh, wait and see, here we go. Um, and so this is another initiative is where um, uh, people get encouraged um, to be paid. So when you are successful in terms of um, uh, of uh, of being paid, uh, um, the 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 agency is kind of like an institute that helps you negotiate uh, the fee, or it gives you a certificate when you are successfully when you have successfully negotiated the fee. So there are two strands, right? Either they will help you negotiate a fee, and there's a whole system here that you can look on the web page. I'm not going to go into detail because you can read that by yourself. Uh, um, and you can add, so th what they are saying is you have to propose the fee. You shouldn't wait for an institution to say, okay, we're going to pay you, I don't know, $5,000 and then you're great uh, and you're good, but no, that you have to kind of calculate and they help you calculate the fee. And they also can help you to negotiate this fee. And for this part, you actually have to become a member. Uh, what I also like is that the membership is low, it's $5. Uh, uh, per month uh, in order for you to be able to uh, make, to have the benefit of this. Unfortunately, it only works in US. Uh, and uh, uh, so, and then they would help you negotiate this fee. Uh, on the other hand, if you are able to negotiate this fee that the, the wage recommends, you get a certificate that you have an expert uh, that would go for, let's say, more established artists, right? Because for them, sometimes it's easier to negotiate this kind of fee. And so it is important if even, you know, more successful artists um, um, get a certificate and sometimes they can also use their cultural capital and symbolic capital to help younger, uh, younger uh, artists negotiate this fee. So I thought it was an, it is an interesting strategy. Uh, one of the reasons why all this also works is that um, in US you have a database where you can check the annual operating budget of all sorts of non-for-profits. Uh, and um, and that's why they can also see how much the fee should be for a particular organization. Uh, I'm not sure if in all the countries that we know here, this is all publicly available, uh, but probably it should be, at least for the public institutions, it should be. So maybe I'll end here um, in terms of what Wage did 
and and then we can have a conversation um, the, more specifically. Maybe there, there are just a, it's a technical uh, question. Yeah. Like in a, the calculation, it's it's a software based, you know, the calculation yeah. of the yeah. e and it would vary depending on different uh, like parameters. You no, know? also like it could be different in different kind of galleries depending yeah. on their budget. The top. The, the total uh, annual operating yeah. expenses. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I mean it would be super interesting. To, to know all these parameters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that um, yeah. Anna mentioned that Lisa is actually going to be part of the, 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 uh -huh. the Congress that they're organizing. So I yeah. think that these would be, I don't have those details, but they did work um, quite a long time and they had a bunch of like also, you know, so, um, um, people from labor law and scholars in the US that they tr try to figure out how to calculate this minimum fee. Because as you all pointed out, um, one of the issues is how do you calculate how much you should be paid, right? Is this, uh, do, you, uh, do you calculate it based on your own personal budget of how much rent you pay and all other expenses that you have? Are there any like minimum wage standards in the country that you live? But it also changes, for instance, in US, it's crazy because if you live in New York, your expenses are way different than if you live, for example, in Buffalo, where I live. It's complete, it's huge difference, even within the state. So um, I think it's a question also when you try to think about minimum fees, what do you take as, as the basis? But I think it's also, yeah, the needs are different and also, um, uh, like uh, uh, Dirk mentioned, I, are you compensated for the, all the work that you did? Are you commissioned or, so yeah, but I think important conversations. Okay, I'm just wondering now, because like our work then just uh, it, uh, got consumed so fast and we are about with the, we have uh, Juliana, uh, the Carab, I don't know, Juliana, how do you feel? Like, would you like to present something? I can present very shortly, it has okay. just a website on yes. the internet. Yeah. Funny. Okay. You can hear us? Okay. okay, so I'm just going to speak very, very briefly about the PAC, which is the Plataforma Assemblearia de Artistas de Catalunya. So it's uh, basically an assembly for artists in Catalunya. So uh, this is our new website, and I'm very happy to show this because this was one of our one of the most important things that we've been doing uh, the past year has been related to our communication strategies because actually the PAC um, is an, derives from a much older organization, which is the a, uh, AAVC, the Visual Artists of Catalonia, which is about 30 years old or more, um, which uh, then had problems and the PAC itself is kind of like a phoenix, which emerged from the ashes in about 2015 and it took off and then it kind of had a bit of a, uh, a difficulty and so part of our work over the past two years has been uh, a lot about communication and kind of reestablishing within the art community in Catalonia the necessity of solidarity and artists coming together because uh, this is something we can talk about in, in in other sessions but what is going on in the art world of why there's so much individualism among artists right and why people also have difficulties accepting um, groups and unions now. Um, so we've worked a lot on uh, the communication and we made this new this new website and I'm very happy because it's very easy to explain what we've been working on. Uh, so one of the things that has been very important for us has been the, the statute of the artist. Sorry, am I speaking too fast guys? Because I like, I can go like a train. Um, the, in Spain, they've been trying to have the statute of the artist for at least 20 years and it's never been passed, okay? The way, that, the way that the assemblies work in Spain is that each autonomous region, so each region in Spain has its own kind of assembly. So the assembly, the PAC only represents Catalonia. Then there's a giant umbrella union called Union AC, which meets, but it doesn't really seem to function. The different regions don't seem to really have the same agenda. And so the PAC itself operates independently. And I have to say that, especially since COVID happened, we've been doing a lot of things, okay? So one of the things that is very important is the statute of the artist. And I think we were talking about this before because without a statute of the artist, without a legal kind of position or profession, it's very hard to get certain things approved. Um, so we've, we're in the middle of debates about this. We're trying to push this at the national level, meaning the Spain level. Um, and so in order to do this, there's also, for example, the Generalitat, which is the region 
Um, they're promoting a census, uh, but the census itself is complicated. And we could talk about that in other sessions of why, I mean, uh, how, it, how artists define themselves and what needs to be the criteria, the base criteria for an artist to access a census to say that they're an artist, because sometimes there's like a fee, like you have to make X amount of money, which is ridiculous because some artists can go for five years without making any money from art, right? So how institutions perceive of what is an artist, no. But we're still um, pushing this because there's a need to understand um, how many artists are, what fields people are working on in order to have a professional status. So one of the things, and I guess here we're going to talk more about economy, is um, we have this section here. We have this section called resources, or courses is resources. And um, for example, we have a section, um, assessoraman, which is a set, like consulting. So we offer professional services, we offer uh, lawyers, a lawyer and we offer uh, an accountant okay so this is a service that if you're a member of the assembly um you have uh you know you have access to these figures okay uh one of the things that we also did was we just published um last week it's this thing it's called fiscalizar para artistas en cuatro pasos which um i'm not gonna i can kind of show you briefly but basically they're videos they're animations videos and they explain how to uh, make an invoice, how to register yourself for taxes. Okay, so, and they're very, very short capsules. They're like about three or four minutes each, but they're basically, and they're very easy. And they basically, here they are, like uh, um, how to set up a studio, how to, you know, uh, how to be a freelance worker, etc. Because there's like, a, in Spain, there's a huge lack of information as to how to get paid and how to register yourself and how to pay taxes on an artist. So these micro micro capsules kind of are a way to um, help artists understand even what regimen to register under, right? Um, and another thing that we did in terms of fiscal, um, we have something, and this is what's interesting for me is that we're debating all the time about making a fee system. And so we're curious, we're very curious about fee systems that are offered by, uh, or that have been organized by other associations. But um, if I can go back here, we don't have a tarifario or a fee system. What we do have though is in the Buenas Practicas, it should be, which is good. We're very, very, very obviously, um, focus on good practices. We have this thing which is called the white book. Um, I'm not gonna open it right now, but basically it was published in about 2015 and 2016. There are no fees, there's no prices involved, but it's about a 350 page book, um, which is a free, it's a PDF or an ebook. You can have both. And just so that you can understand what it consists of, um, this book basically is a book of contracts okay so it's a book of contracts saying okay what happens if you make a new work what happens if you do a performance what happens if uh you show a work that's already been made no um and it's on every different category that was identified at the time there's an analysis of what the category is practical questions and the actual contract that you're supposed to use with the organization, okay? So there's no price list, but there's actually like contracts with the considerations that were done with an accountant and with a lawyer um, about how, you know, you're supposed to interact with a gallery or an institution. Uh, the question, and I think the interesting is the commitment, because what happens if you have a contract and you go to a gallery and you say, this is a contract for a performance. And most of the times they'll just say, we don't care. Okay, so this is the issue, but I think that one of the important things is to get it out that artists are professional, that we do believe that we have contracts. And so I think that this kind of material kind of serves as a base. You know, it's like a backup to say like, there, no, it exists. You're supposed to be making a contract. In this, there's no prices though. Um, so that's in terms of, of prices. And what we've been doing basically is that our organization has been, um, I think we're gonna talk about this in other sessions, especially because of COVID, you know, doing a, a lot of surveys, a lot of questionnaires, opening up uh, resistance, caixas de resistencias for artists who are unable to pay, to pay their fees, um, pushing a lot on a political level. And the political level that we work at is um, regional and city because we don't work, we, the only thing we can work on at a national level is the statute, the national statute of the artist, but we work with the region of Catalonia and with the city of Barcelona. So pushing for things, for example, 
this one thing that I'll just show you, which is called prototypes, um, which is, well, uh, I can't go back here, but basically um, opening, uh, we do a lot of dialogue with institutions. So basically opening residency programs within museums, especially when there was the closure of museums, we went into all the museums or as many museums as possible and developed residency programs saying, okay, your spaces are closed or they're not being able to be used the way that they could be used before uh, for exhibitions. This is a model that we looked at um, the Mambo in, in Bologna uh, for, and we pushed for a lot of uh, brand new residencies with institutions and projects uh, where artists were being funded. And also we pushed a lot for increasing um, acquisitions, you know, public acquisitions. Um, what we're supposed to be at is 2% of the public budget, but it's not there, okay? Mm -hmm. So we were pushing for uh, this kind of thing, yeah. So that's generally what we what we do and our relationship with the economy. So I don't know if yeah. you have. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, and I think this was a long session and we need a break. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, can, can you say like on uh, people on the Zoom, if you would like to continue the discussion after half an hour or or if this was uh like too much because we, we the, all these presentations took um, a much longer time than uh, we planned i think i mean it was really fantastic unfortunately i won't be able to join yeah. back because for time i i don't have uh, enough time to come yeah. this afternoon so even if you meet uh, i i won't be able to join but i think it was already like extremely interesting mm -hmm. and important and i hope we keep in touch because i feel like our like struggles and also work are completely related and i think we can definitely like start from each other's work and like continue together so um i just would like to thank you all yeah. so much yeah okay uh, thank you so much all of you and also like it was like a, so much time on zoom it's a bit uh, exhausting for everybody so like we will make uh, some uh, take some notes and send you from this uh, today's uh, meeting and i would also like to uh, tell you that tomorrow we are organizing another event that will be open for the public from 7 uh, p.m so uh, you are very invited to also take part in uh, very much invited to take part in this and thank you so much thank you to a lot of interesting things to hear thanks okay. a lot i send you my presentation so you yeah. might forward it to the others since yeah. they also requested it yes please uh, could you send also lucrezia it would be great oh, yeah. Yeah. so maybe it's good to exchange the sheets we very I will try to join tomorrow at least for one hour one and a half hours depending on time mm -hmm. and okay. for now I think it doesn't make any sense if I'm the only one on zoom so that you can just be okay there will be more people on zoom yeah okay yes. so for now I will also stop and I see you tomorrow then yeah yeah okay Sure. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. <laughs>